absolutely no reason to, to disbelieve him then. We have no reason to disbelieve him today. Uh, we certainly would have uh, filed this case even knowing what we know today. Mr. Sneddon, I understand you spoke with the young accuser in this case after the verdict came down. How is he doing? I did. Well, I think he's a little down right now. It's uh, very difficult for a young man to um, understand why people wouldn't believe him. Um, if you saw the video that, that we played to the jury uh, during his disclosure, you would have some idea of how traumatic it was for him to finally disclose to somebody and then now have somebody tell him that they don't believe him. And, uh, you know, he is, he is only 15 years old, and uh, he... Um, took a lot of persuasion to get him to come forward and to disclose and it was a very difficult and emotional thing for him mm -hmm. and I think it's very difficult for him to understand now why people don't believe him. Court watchers have said that as the verdicts were read they saw the color drain from your face both for you Mr. Sennon and you Mr. Zonin. What were you feeling when you heard not guilty over and over again? Tom? Well, first of all, I don't know how they could do that since my back was to them. <laughs> and I was asked yesterday about somebody saying I buried my, my face in my hands. Well, that's just simply not true. I, was, I had the file in front of me, and I was writing down the verdicts as they came in. And uh, obviously, we, uh, we were disappointed. But I would say that's a, that's a, that's a little hyperbole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when the jurors spoke out after this verdict came down, many of them said they just did not like the demeanor of the accuser's mother. Mr. Stenen, what did you think when you heard jurors saying that? I wasn't surprised. Uh, Ron, you know, he, he uh, handled the uh, on the stand. When, uh, you know, we, we knew uh, this was a woman who was in a domestic violence relationship for over 16 years, and had a lot of the scars and things that we see in our business all the time from, from people who have, that, have had that kind of relationship and that kind of abuse. And we knew that from the get-go. But, um, you know, I think from our standpoint was is that we would have thought that the jury would be more discerning with regard to whatever things that she said on the stand. The reality is there were only two people in the room when the molestation occurred. It was and Michael Jackson. And we had a very deep firm belief in the credibility of and still do. Tom Sned and Ron Zonin, we thank you. Prosecutor Tom Sneddon, yesterday, a day his office suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of Michael Jackson's jury. Well, tonight, he's talking about what happened to MSNBC's own Rita Cosby. Rita joins us now in Scarborough country. Rita. Joe, Tom Snedden was quite fiery during this interview, and for the first time we hear how the boy who accused Michael Jackson of molestation reacted to the verdict. We at MSNBC, in order to protect the boy's privacy, have chosen to remove his name, so you may at times not hear the audio for a brief second during the interview. But what you will hear is a boisterous prosecutor who defends his case through and through. First, I asked the district attorney if he was personally devastated by the jury's decision. We felt that we did the best job that we could, and uh, that's it. I mean, uh, uh, that's, my, that's our philosophy, you know. You, you do the best you can, and uh, that, we're not the judge and we're not the jury. We're the, we're the people who put on the case, and we feel that we did a, a, a very good job. Well, a better than good job, an excellent job. Did you talk to the boy? Uh, what was his reaction? He was uh, very discouraged. He was, uh, as you would expect, a young 15-year-old boy who everybody in the world now knows the jury didn't believe what he said, was very discouraged. He uh, couldn't understand it um, and was uh, down. And I talked to him at length and told him to get his chin up, that he was a very courageous young man and that he had done the right thing. And, you know, that's the whole thing about this is, you, you know, we did the right thing for the right reason. He did, too. And... It didn't go our way, but, you know, life goes on, and, and, and his life will go on, and it will be a very good life. He's a very courageous young man. What did he say to you specifically? He asked me a couple of times, you know, what, you know, what happened? Why didn't, they, why didn't they believe me? Why didn't, you know, and I, you know, I tried to explain to him that, uh, uh, I can't, I, that I couldn't. I couldn't tell him that, that, uh, uh, that in, in our, our opinion, we believed in him and continue to believe in him, and that, 
I told him that basically this is a chapter of your life that's closed. Close it up and get on and with your life. Uh, go back to school, play your sports, and uh, and uh, and be a, be a good person, be somebody, and he will because that's he's that kind of person. Is there any doubt in your mind after talking to this boy uh, that Michael Jackson did not molest him? There never has been from the very first time I met him. So you believe that Michael Jackson molested this boy, even to this day? Uh, we, look, Rita, it's just simple. Uh, not only do I believe that, but all the people associated with this case who's had an opportunity to be with to hear we interact with uh, th This is not Tom Snedden. Th this decision to go forward with this case was a decision that was made by a team of, of people uh, a number of lawyers beyond myself, and there isn't a person involved in that decision that in any way, shape, or form has ever wavered in their belief that was was telling the truth. And you believe that to this day? Of course. The jury, though, another team, you know, eight women, four men, said no way. They said the evidence wasn't there. That's what they said, and I, and I don't quarrel with juries. But you're asking me what my belief is. And my belief is, uh, has not wavered, and it will not waver ever in, is, in that regard. And that's why we have juries, <laughs> instead of having prosecutors make those decisions. Is it possible, though, sir, that this boy and this mother, uh, who have lied before in other cases like the J.C. Penney case, totally fooled you guys, and they were lying again? No, and, and that's a misrepresentation of what happened in J.C. Penney's. How so? Because even it sounds like she had exaggerated well, some things did, before. Well, all right. Exaggerating is not the same thing as being a liar. And uh, what a mother does and says is different from what a child says or does. And you were asking me specifically about... And I don't think that uh, if the mother had even done something wrong that you visit the sins of the mother on the son. If you have real belief in the integrity of what the, what the young child was telling you. So I think that, you know, this, this tendency to kind of... Uh, mesh these things together as if one's dependent on the other I think is a, probably a, a fallacy which a lot of people have bought into perhaps even the jury but like I said I'm not I'm not quibbling with the jury's verdict I'm just you're asking me my personal opinion and I'm, I'm telling you that uh, there isn't a person associated with the prosecution of this case that that has ever wavered in their belief in what do you say to people who say that you personally had a personal vendetta against Michael Jackson, that you were driven by it, that you spent all this taxpayer money, hundreds, you know, of search warrants, uh, tons of time, and it was a waste of taxpayers' money because the jury sort of laughed it off? Rita, first of all, there weren't a hundred search warrants in this case. Second of all, we didn't spend a ton of money. And third of all, that whole idea of a revenge is such nonsense. I see that you folks in the media that really believe that garbage. Come down here and check my life. See what I've been doing the last 10 years. You know, I, I have a family. I have a large family. I have grandkids. I play sports. I work in the community. I volunteer my time. If you think I have given this one passing thought once that case ended in 1993 and 94, you're, you're, you're not in touch with reality. I mean, I had a chance to make a plus probably a million dollars writing a book on that case and turned it down. Will you ever write a book? To go on, Will you ever write a book on this? I had chances. I Probably not. I mean, I'm just not. I'm probably not. I don't, but, I mean, I had a chance back then to do that. I had a chance to go on TV. I had a chance to be interviewed. I never said one word after that press conference, ever, in 10 years. Now, so, I mean, I... I and, Go ahead. Yeah, it's the truth. I mean, just look at it. Uh, it's the truth. I, I never, people would, every time he would do something, they would call me for a con, from a comment everywhere. Japan, uh, France, England, New York, everywhere. The media would go crazy, and I didn't take any of those calls. I never made a comment about anything. I, I really, really, really was not involved in following Michael Jackson's life when when. when said he was not going to co cooperate with our investigation that was over with and I moved on and that's that's the truth I don't know I know that doesn't make it nice for you folks because it doesn't sell but that's the truth there is word tonight that Jackson and his team I guess uh, have indicated that they want you to immediately surrender these photos uh, that were taken uh, that you have access to of Michael Jackson's private parts that they are fearful that they're going to be leaked out in the press somehow will you surrender those photos Rita, that's just another instance where the defense team doesn't know what they're talking about. I don't have those photos. The sheriff's department doesn't have those photos. Nobody can get those photos without a court order 
There are only three names on the signature to get in there, and you need signatures from two of them and a court, a judge's approval. So this is just typical of what's been going on in this case ever since it's happened. The people don't know what they're talking about, and it's not true. So what do you say to Michael Jackson's team who are saying, we're worried that Tom Sen's going to leak this out? It's just it's, it's the same old nonsense. I can't leak out what I can't get to, can I? So you can guarantee that they won't I don't have the negative statement. What did I just tell you? They can't get, nobody can get access to them without a judge's approval. So they're not going anywhere is what signatures. you're saying. That's what I said, and that's what I've been saying, and that's the truth. Now, if you saw and Michael Jackson, all these things where, if you saw Michael what? Jackson uh, on the street, you ran into him, or run into him again, <laughs> what would you say to him? <laughs> that's a highly unlikely scenario. But if it were to happen, I run into each. what would you say to him if you could see him? It is, it, if you happen to run I, into I, him, I wouldn't say it. I'd, I'd probably nod and keep walking. You, would you walk away? I, I said I'd probably nod and keep walking. I wouldn't go out of my way to avoid him. I, I don't feel I don't feel any vindictiveness towards this man. In, in a lot of respects, he's a he's a fairly pathetic person in, in the sense of what he's gone through. And uh, I don't have any vindictive against him. And I, it's just that simple. Are you sad, sir, as your term is ending? Um, that this is no, I'm maybe the last, well, no, this may be the last, you know, huge case. You're certainly never going to have a case like this with a year and a half left in your term. You sad this is the way you're going out? No, I, 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 I just don't think you people understand who I am. And who I am is that, that, that I tell the, the, the kids that I've coached and I tell my kids that I've raised that if you do the best job that you can possibly do and you do it for the right reasons, whether you win or whether you lose is unimportant. The question is, can you walk off the field at the end of the game with your chin up and say, I gave it my all, and I played fair and square, and I did the right thing? If you've done that, you've got nothing to apologize for, nothing to put your head down about. And I'm proud of the, my office. I'm proud of the people who participated. I'm proud of the sheriff's department. And if anybody thinks that because we lost this case that I'm going to walk around in a sackcloth with my chin down around my knees, it's crazy, because I'm not. Mm. Our thanks to the district attorney. And by the way, Sten is a well-known figure in Santa Barbara. He's a father of nine kids. He became the district attorney for the county in which Neverland resides in 1983 when Michael Jackson was already a household name and a megastar. And Joe, as you can tell, he does not shy away from some pretty tough questions. Man, Rita, that was an explosive interview. Now, you talk to the other side today also. What? Is the Jackson family going through today? You know what? Just sheer relief, Joe. They just seem to be so joyed and so happy over the decision yesterday. I don't think anybody knows you know, how the decision was going to go yesterday when the jury verdict came down. Both sides had no idea what the outcome was going to be. So I think incredible relief. The other thing I'm also gathering is that Michael Jackson, uh, a very close person to Michael Jackson, said to me, today he is mentally and physically exhausting. He's sleeping. But they also say he's planning the next step in his career, always looking ahead, and my understanding is that they had a big event most of the time yesterday in Neverland for the several hours after the verdict came down, and now most of them are going back to their homes trying to go on with their lives. Joe? Rita Cosby, thanks again. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of an interview. Heck of an interview. Thank you. We appreciate it.
Watch on Close Up this morning, what went wrong for the prosecution in the Michael Jackson trial? Santa Barbara County District Attorney Tom Stedden and Senior Prosecutor Ron Zonin tried the child molestation case against the King of Pop. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Mr. Snedden, let me start with you. Before I ask for your personal feelings about the verdict, I, I know you've probably spoken to the accuser and his family members. How were they impacted by what happened in that court? Uh, yes, I talked to him uh, immediately after the verdict in the, in the afternoon. Uh, he's very down. He's having a difficult time understanding why people wouldn't believe him. Um, he's gone through a lot in his life. He survived cancer, a very serious bout of cancer. Uh, he didn't necessarily want to get involved in this case. He disclosed very reluctantly. If you saw the video that, uh, that we played for the jury, it was very evident that it was very painful for him to tell people what had happened to him. And uh, so he, it's difficult, as you would expect of any young, young boy who uh, went on, on put, his, put his heart and his soul in, on the line in front of the world, for that matter, and uh, to not be believed. It's, uh, that's, that's a hard thing for somebody to accept at that age. It's hard for any adult, let alone for a child. Mr. Zonin, uh, a long trial, 14 weeks. Um, I'm sure you've probably second-guessed some things that went on. In the last 36 hours or so, a lot of the jurors have spoken out about the mother, and I, and I know you've heard their comments. A and to put it briefly, she didn't have a lot of fans on that jury. Some didn't believe her. Some downright disliked her. Looking back, do you mm -hmm. regret putting her on the stand? Well, there was no question. Uh, we, we, uh, we had to do that. She uh, had information that nobody else had, and she would have been put on the witness stand by the defense had we not done so. So we really had no alternative but to do that. Um, this is a person who has gone through quite a bit in her lifetime. She was in a very violent relationship for over 16 years with the next husband. Uh, she had a child who almost died of cancer. And she manifests a lot of the personality traits of people who have gone through that kind of a nightmare, that in long-term nightmare. Let me just interrupt. You uh, say we, you we had to, that. You say you had to put her on the stand. It seems to me you had sure. to put her on the stand to prove conspiracy, because that's really what she testified about. But if you'd not gone with the conspiracy charge, with a lot of which a lot of people felt was a reach anyway, then couldn't you have done without the mother's testimony? No, she would have been called as a witness by the defense. She was already under subpoena by the defense. They anticipated the possibility that we wouldn't call her. That was part of their defense, was that she was the one who fabricated the case and caused her children to uh, conform their testimony to her direction. So they would have called her in any event. But she knew a lot of information. She was there during that period of time. And frankly, a jury would have wondered if we had not called her to the witness stand. So Mr. we felt it was appropriate to Mr. do Mr. Snen, do you have any second thoughts about the conspiracy charge? A lot of people felt it made the trial a little longer, a little more complicated, and was, as I just mentioned, to run a reach. You're talking about a young kid here who never had the chance to grow up and be normal. Kid grew up, he grew up very differently than a lot of people. Granted, he's Michael Jackson, but there's a lot of reasons why he had certain insecurities. Because it was him, they always had something negative instead of something positive. You know, let's do a head count and see how many children Michael Jackson actually changed their life or did anything. As you know, in Africa, when you have a guest, when you receive a brother, you always have to show him a sign that you care about him. Um, this is beautiful. This is a wonderful occasion. I thank everybody who came tonight. 
and all the women of Africa. And I want you to know that I've been going to Africa since I was 12 years old, and I love it very much. And I take uh, my children there all the time for vacation. It's our favorite spot to vacation, actually. Okay, now, one quick picture, and so we can move on. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's fine. I believe a thousand percent, I'll go to my grave with it, that he was innocent completely. He was being blackmailed.